Just a few days ago, the Chiang Mai Administrative Court ordered the Prime Minister of Thailand and the NEB to come up with an emergency plan, both short-term and long-term, to deal with the PM 2.5 problem, what we think of as the burning season or the smoky season. Why did this happen? What exactly does the ruling say and what does it mean? Let's talk about it right now. Sawati Kap, Sabaidi Mai Kap, welcome to Chiang Mai, Thailand. If you live in Chiang Mai or Northern Thailand or you visit frequently, you know the problem. We have what's called the burning season or the smoky season. That's when farmers in the surrounding hillsides, not just in Northern Thailand, but in the countries nearby, Myanmar, Laos, down to the south, Cambodia, start burning their crops. Um, this is basically a, an economical way to get rid of what they call biomass. Uh, that's the products left, for example, when they harvest corn. You've got stalks and husks. They've got no way to really economically and quickly get rid of that, so they burn it. It, it has the double benefit of returning nutrients to the soil. The problem is, is it floods Thailand, specifically northern Thailand, with smoke. Unfortunately, at certain times of the year, this reaches very unhealthy levels, reaching levels that the World Health Organization in their AQI index finds extremely unhealthful. This typically occurs February, March, and April, although it can vary year to year, and some years are worse than others. But this problem didn't exist 10 years ago. It's really over the last seven or eight years where it's become so dangerous and causing a major health problem. During this time, it causes Northern Thailand residents to need to wear masks almost every day and try and spend more time indoors where they have to keep air purifiers going 24 hours a day, assuming you've got the economic ability to even buy one of those, which many Thais don't. Now, there's also air pollution problems in Bangkok, of course, and it's getting worse and worse, but it's a little bit different for people in Bangkok. Um, although, yes, they're affected by the smoky season with smoke drifting in from the north and also nearby Cambodia, there it's mainly auto pollution and manufacturing. By comparison, in Chiang Mai, we have pretty much very clear air nine months out of the year. It's only the burning season when our air becomes extremely dangerous. So this court ruling is actually quite amazing and encouraging. Um, this problem has been going on for so long with very little government intervention or court action. And the difference is in the West, people sue over these things all the time. They sue their government. They sue the companies that are causing the problem. But in Thailand, it's just really not an available option. It's not practical. So the fact that this judge actually issued this ruling specifically ordering the current Thai prime minister, Seita Tawisen, and the NEB to take action within 90 days, writing both a short-term proposal and long-term proposal is amazing. Now, what the court ruling did was actually quite wise, and I think will reduce the chance that this gets reversed on appeal. They did not find the current prime minister negligent in any way. That's just not something Thai courts do. But what they did do is they found the last prime minister to be negligent in his duties in addressing this problem, as well as the NEB as well. So the court has ordered that within 90 days, it receive a short-term proposal and a long-term proposal to address the issue of the PM 2.5. PM stands for particulate matter, and 2.5 refers to the size of that particulate matter. You might see a reference to PM10, or in this case, PM2.5. The 2.5 is even more dangerous because it's smaller, it has a greater likelihood of going through masks and settling deeper in your lungs. It tends to also cause more health problems. It would probably be a bit naive if we thought that this court ruling is actually going to change anything for the smoky season. That would be too much to ask for. But hopefully it signals a change combined with other things that shows that significant progress might be on the way. So not only do we have a court brave enough to issue an order against a sitting prime minister, but there's also been actions by this new prime minister in his campaign promises to, to give us cleaner air here in Thailand. Um, the Clean Air Act has passed the initial stages in the parliament and is now up for discussion uh, with parliament members. And just last month in December, there was a multi-country meeting between Laos, Myanmar, and Thailand regarding what to do with this shared problem. 
slash and burn is a major issue in all these countries, and it affects everybody's air quality. This image is from last year during the smoky season, showing how many fires there are burning all around Thailand, and especially around the main city of Chiang Mai. Now here, in my opinion, is the problem. Uh, the Thai government is like every government. Um, they balance economic issues with the environment. Sometimes one benefits to the detriment of the other, and quite often it's the environment and human beings that lose. Uh, we can see some examples of that here in Thailand. It appeared that Thailand was set to adopt the Euro 5 standards regarding certain environmental issues, but those have been postponed, supposedly in the name of the economy. We also saw the Thai Factory Act revise to encourage economic stimulus and more manufacturing. And of course, there's the Eastern Economic Corridor, they call it, extending manufacturing out of Bangkok. So what's a government to do? Um, the problem the government faces, and hopefully this will encourage them to support the environment, is that the bad air in Thailand, pretty much year-round in Bangkok and during the months that I mentioned, February, March, and April in Chiang Mai, is going to be detrimental to tourists. Um, I don't know exactly how much that might have affected tourist dollars, but Thailand wants and needs that tourist dollar. So I think at some point there's going to be a proverbial tipping point where the government has to basically say, yes, we want to support our economy, but we also have to support clean air, not just for the good of our people, but also because if we do not do so, it's going to have economic detrimental effects. So the problem is really complex because it's multinational. Even if the farmers in Thailand were to completely stop slash and burning, by the way, it's actually illegal to slash and burn. Uh, farmers just do it anyway. There doesn't seem to be much prosecution. But even if they were to stop, there would still be the burning in Laos and Myanmar and Cambodia. So how can we solve that problem? Well, I actually have a couple ideas I want to share with you that I think are worth the government looking at. Um, it requires the cooperation of the private sector. So number one, let's try and get those farmers off corn, which is the main crop that results in most of the smoke. It's also rice, it's also uh, sugarcane, but it's mainly corn. So let's try and get as many farmers as we can shifting to marijuana growth. Now, marijuana was decriminalized about 18 months ago in Thailand. There's now legislation pending, which will probably take away recreational use very soon, but there's still going to be an extremely high demand for it. And I think that the requirements to get medical marijuana are gonna be quite low. So if we can get farmers to be growing marijuana, similar to what they currently get from the agribusiness conglomerates that pay them to grow corn, they'll be growing a crop that does not require burning, but still provide the farmers with about the same income. So converting a lot of this farmland to marijuana growth, setting a fair price for the farmers so they're not losing any income, would only account for some of the problem. The rest of it really takes the cooperation of the private sector. These agribusiness giants that are paying these farmers to grow corn and rice, and it results indirectly in the slash and burn and the burning season. Here's my suggestion. The reason that these farmers slash and burn, it's just historically what they know, but it's also the only option that they have. It's the cheapest option they have open to them. They don't have the ability to economically clear their fields. They don't have the machinery or the equipment. They don't have the resources. If the companies that are purchasing the corn and the rice invest more money, I know this means spending more money, but they can provide a solution to these farmers. They can give them alternatives to burning. Now, people will say, well, from the company's perspective, why would they want to do that? They don't want to pay more money for their product. Well, if they do pay more money for their product, they're not going to lose money because they're going to be raising prices of what they sell. The end point product, which is the beef and the chicken and the pork, and you might say, well, that's bad for the consumer. Nobody wants prices to go up. So let me ask you this, if you live in Northern Thailand, which of these two options would you prefer? Would you rather buy masks, buy air purifiers, spend money for the doctor, the hospital, a funeral, because of the terrible air quality every year? Or would you rather have clean air and live a happier life and spend a little bit more money for meat? 
the price would probably balance out about the same. So why not have clean air? The profit for the agribusiness giants would remain the same. They're just passing on their extra cost to the consumer. They're spending more for the farmer, so the farmer income is the same. So this might be an extremely simplistic solution, but if this is adopted in part and crops are replaced with marijuana in part, I think it could make a substantial difference in cleaning up our air. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I know it's been pretty technical. We're talking about court decisions. We're talking about government action, big business. It's maybe not the most uh, exciting, uh, like a video where we're going to eat exciting street food. <laughs> but if you live in Thailand, uh, especially in the north, or if you like visiting here, it's really uh, an important issue. Um, a lot of you are going to be a lot smarter than me. If you've got suggestions on how to solve this problem, or you've got suggestions on my ideas to make it better, um, please put them in the comments. You never know who's going to be watching this video. Maybe someone's going to watch it in the industries that matter and it might trigger a thought and actually start some change. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, I hope you'll consider subscribing and, and watch my other videos. Uh, likes are always welcome. And like I said, please uh, leave a comment. Until I see you guys again, safe travels. When we wake birds and see the sun side by side our fears are done all the good times just begun